Uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you very much for joining the session. And um, uh, I'll be watching the text chat here as we go along. So very excited to uh, to present this topic to you. Um, the subject of our session is uh, Teams and Yammer, yes, please. And, and, and this is one that I'm super excited about um, because in this session, uh, unlike uh, other community sessions where I do, where often I will you know, talk about a, uh, a concept or a subject in, in general, this one is, is a, a true case study of uh, an experience that we have gone through um, at AvPoint. So I am the CTO of AvPoint Public Sector. That's my day job. Um, I'm also a Microsoft Regional Director um, based in the New York, New Jersey area. Although, as you can imagine, uh, as a public sector CTO, I do um, spend quite a bit of time uh, in the DC area as well. Um, some other little tidbits uh, about me. Uh, my areas of focus uh, started with SharePoint. Uh, I, felt I built my first SharePoint site in uh, 2013, so came out of the Microsoft Collaboration Stack, now focusing very tightly on Office 365, Teams, and SharePoint, um, and have done a lot of work in regulated industries, specifically government, um, um, FinServ, uh, professional services. Um, so anywhere there's there's restrictions on, on you know, uh, open and free sharing, is where I usually get involved. This session will be a little bit different though. This session is going to focus squarely on the strategy. And so um, this session is really more born out of my experience as a uh, one of the leading members of our product strategy team at AvPoint. So that'll that'll hook in in, in just a few minutes. Um, uh, post session, this is how you can get a hold of me. Um, I'll answer to just about anything. So um, uh, you can get to get a hold of me there at some point in time. Let's do a little bit of housekeeping, a little bit of housekeeping. I was really looking forward uh, to seeing a lot of friends and new faces uh, in Las Vegas uh, this past week. Um, and uh, like all of you, uh, was disappointed uh, by the reality of our current situation. Uh, but next year, March 23rd to 25th, the Microsoft 365 collaboration conference as, as the SharePoint conference evolves here to uh, cover the broader Microsoft 365 ecosystem. Very excited about this. Mark it on your calendars, um, and I hope to be there to buy all of you a drink next year. Thanks also uh, to our sponsors. Um, in addition to these sponsors who have worked really hard to help the organizers make this event possible, uh, we have also uh, got a, a tremendous group of very hardworking people behind the scenes. So we appreciate all the work and all the support. And then finally, a couple more things and then we'll get going. Um, our uh, vendor and um, and booth raffles. So basically, um, uh, you can follow this link here, uh, the bit.ly link here for the Microsoft 365 raffle um, and get yourself uh, an Oculus Quest all in one device. I have never had the opportunity to play with one, but I have watched uh, my 15 year old stepson um, do nothing but play with it, so I can guarantee it's worth it. Um, also, very, very important, uh, consider donating to these charities, um, which uh, again, in this time of need, um, uh, would really love to, to have your support as well as we uh, look to provide uh, information and um, resources to these organizations that need it. So a little bit about our journey today. We're going to dissect the AvPoint journey for how we came to this approach of using Teams and Yammer together uh, it, as a uh, better together scenario. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about a history of where this came from, uh, a little bit about uh, why Teams became such a focus for us in a very particular use case, but then also why it became apparent over time that maybe this wasn't the best way to solve our problem. Um, we'll go into a little bit of why uh, Yammer came back into the picture. Uh, and then I'll do a little bit of demo showing you ways in which uh, these can be uh, used together in a better together scenario. So uh, again, I'll be watching the text chat. Feel free to communicate uh, through that uh, Q&A um, if you have the opportunity and the need. Um, so let, let's go ahead and start out with uh, with just a bit of fun, actually. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and open um, a poll here. And let's go ahead, if you can, would love to have you guys uh, participate here. So either through the um, the QR code here or the um, or the code that you see. Uh, we've got a few questions here for you. So what I'll do is I'll pull my um, I'll pull my presenter mode over and uh, we'll look at the results as they come in. But uh, it'd be great if you're out there to uh, to go ahead and uh, respond to this first question. Um, this is an open ended question, this first one, and it would be great to get some feedback from you on what tools specifically your organizations are using to collaborate throughout your user base. So we're talking, you know, your broad sort of engagement uh, technologies. For some companies that might be um, still be email. For some companies that might be Yammer, it might be Teams, it might be Slack, it could be Facebook. So um, if anybody could pop in there um, and give us some great, we got an answer there around Teams. Uh, we've got one response, so uh, it's nice to know. Uh, that we're not alone here. <laughs> um, anything else? Anybody else want to join and, and give their input here? Otherwise, we're gonna uh, we're gonna move on. Skype, Yammer, good, 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 good. Okay, keep it coming, keep it coming. Um, email, yes. Uh, it's probably a good thing this is anonymous, right? Um, hey, we got a Yammer. Um, SharePoint, okay, good, good, good. Super. Super, super. Yeah, these are the prime contenders, right? In this uh, in this audience, these are the prime contenders that you would imagine. Uh, Facebook groups, there you go. Workplace, Facebook workplace. Um, good deal. Uh, Ring Central, okay. Ring Central for um, for some live events and things like that. That'd be good. Um, cool. Let's move on to the next question. Um, Thanks for the input there, and let's do a little bit of a closed-ended question here today. Now, you can vote more than once, uh, but curious to know the status of the Yammer implementations um, that you have. So, a um, few different categories here. Uh, we don't have Yammer. What's Yammer? Okay. <laughs> um, good, good, good. Nobody's, nobody's banging the Yammer drum right now, huh? We'll see if we can't fix that as, as part of today's presentation. OK, cool. Haven't had broad adoption, interested in what's new. Super. OK, um, and then because teams, hey, we love Yammer. All right. Um, we'll hang on to this one for a few more minutes because it's looking start to look pretty interesting there. Um, been there, done that, not doing it anymore. Uh, yes, we will talk about that. Um, and we'll talk about the impact of that because it's relatively important. Okay, great stats, great stats. Thanks for the interaction, everybody. I got one more for you. Um, and because this presentation is specifically going to be um, a little bit of a study in a journey from uh, um, a completely teams focused approach to solving a problem to a teams plus yammer approach and kind of curious on the other side of that equation um, what the teams adoption and teams usage out there looks like so i've been listening to the news i know that everybody and their brother is using teams uh, so i'm sure there's a there's a quite a bit of a surge out there um, but let's see what comes in love teams haven't had broad adoption okay good 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 it's like most people are either on the journey or are well along their way. So that's all great stuff. OK, good, good, good. All right. Yeah, pretty split there um, between solid adoption and um, probably ramping up. Good, super. Again, thank you guys very much for those uh, for those answers. I appreciate it. Um, let's go ahead and um, and continue on in the presentation here. So uh, I want to give a little bit of context uh, as we tell this story, because if you're going to understand why we're in this journey and and a little bit about um, uh, what our considerations were, I think it's important you know the nature of AvPoint. So AvPoint is a global Microsoft ISV. We've been around a long time. Um, we've got a lot of customers. Um, 
and we're spread out globally. So we're a global organization. We've got offices in, in um, you know, 30 different offices worldwide, just about every continent. Um, so um, there's a lot of a lot of people in Avpoint. Um, we're not so big that we're a, a large company that has a lot of internal knowledge management um, personnel, communications personnel. So we're kind of on the on the large end of a company that is still uh, in many ways very scrappy um, and, many, and, and very startup minded. Um, and that should tell you a little bit about how our not at knowledge management works um, within Avpoint and some of the challenges that we may have there. Um, so we've got enough people to make it difficult to communicate but enough business to make it really important that we communicate. And that's what we're getting to over here on the right hand side. Um, our reality is that we have a fairly large stable of products. Even just counting our, our uh, cloud products, um, which are numerous, um, we've got a platform that launches twice, uh, uh, that launches every other month. So bi-monthly releases. So that means, you know, six releases a year of multiple products. You can imagine um, the, the information uh, about what's coming and what's new and why we're doing it and gathering feedback back from the field uh, about how those releases are landing and what people are wanting. Um, and to make it even more complex, um, most of our products uh, are targeted at some fairly complex and and uh, deeply integrated business problems. So things like security, compliance, governance, it's, it's, you know, it's not simple stuff in many cases. So it's crucially important that our technical teams have the latest information available to them at any particular point in time. Um, and that's where our problem came in. Uh, like many organizations, um, Avpoint in probably pre-2013 was very um, email focused. We had IM, but IM was used, you know, uh, Link and, and then Skype for Business. We used very much for like one-to-one -one and one-to-few communications. Um, if there was an announcement that needed to go out, it probably went out through email. Um, we had a deep SharePoint footprint, but SharePoint was mostly team-based and focused on, you know, document sharing amongst teams. And so, um, Getting true knowledge, discovery, conversation, insights out was a was a core need that we knew that we have. Um, we followed a strategy that many folks did back then, which is essentially a you know a distribution list where all of our technical folks could ask their questions. Um, how could this be positioned? What should I be doing here? Does the product really do that? Um, when are we going to add this feature? Um, and that was all done in. Um, uh, basically a, a group distribution list um, with all of the problems that we know that that, uh, that, that had. Uh, so new members came on and didn't have access to legacy information. Curation of legacy information was almost non-existent. So you're answering the same questions over and over again. Um, and really it became quite a problem. So this knowledge management problem uh, became uh, pretty difficult. What we realized was and this is a a pretty good article here in the in the link you can you can grab these slides um, post event. Um, what we realized was that we really needed true communities of practice, right? And so, uh, without boring you with a very large uh, set of text here, let's focus in on a couple of areas of this definition um, from uh, the Harvard Business Review. First, um, these are groups of people informally bound together by shared expertise and, and passion, right? Doesn't mean that they always work together, it means that they're probably spread out throughout the organization. And the other key thing here in this definition is that they share their experiences and knowledge in a free flowing and created way. This was not a top down information dump of uh, that was going to solve our problem. We really needed a community, a thriving community where people could interact together. Um, and uh, back in 2013, we had our first dance with Yammer. Um, so my my good friend uh, Jeremy Thake, uh, who was at Avpoint at the time, um, we had quite a bit of uh, of conversation at the time, and and it was uh, it even spawned a a blog post here. Um, and at the time, SharePoint 2013 had just come out, and we had been planning because we'd been involved in a lot of the pre-release stuff. We'd been planning a lot for uh, beginning to use SharePoint 2013 communities to be the place to host this knowledge. And we had been ramping up for that. Um, and then right about that time, Microsoft uh, made the Yammer acquisition. 
and uh, for many reasons, which you could read in this article, uh, I'm not going to bore you with them. Um, uh, we made the decision to bet on Yammer, and, and in part it was because the writing on the wall was there for SharePoint communities. Um, there were some things we liked about SharePoint communities in terms of their being connected to where the place where all of the rest of our data was stored. The organization already used SharePoint, um, but the writing was on the wall that, that uh, Microsoft wasn't going to maintain both of those uh, platforms. So we made that uh, that bet on Yammer. Um, and for a while, it worked pretty well. Um, we, it had that shine of something brand new. Um, it was very open. It was the typical Yammer viral model. There was no um, real guidance or control or limitations on who could create what workspaces. But as so often happens, not just with Yammer, but also with other, um, other systems like this, is we saw an instant spike in adoption. Um, but then as folks got inundated, confused, communication fatigue set in. Where was that message? I don't know. Why am I part of this group, which looks like it's the same part of this group, right? These kind of things started to perk up. Um, and so right as, as there was some frustration um, setting in, especially given that when I uploaded files to Yammer, those files didn't have any connection to the rest of the files that I collaborated on. If I needed to um, co-author files, right? I couldn't really put them in Yammer because Yammer wasn't the right place for that. So, um, so much of our communication and our collaboration involved occasional file collaboration, things like that, that it was just became difficult. In addition, one of the things that we saw was that um, it was kind of difficult now to have one more place to go. So just as Yammer was, was waning, um, the new kid in town came in. Um, at F point. So uh, if going back a few years ago now, uh, Teams uh, launched, Microsoft launched Microsoft Teams. And um, this really was a key for us internally. It became a fantastic uh, way for us to collaborate um, as true teams. Because again, mostly our team collaboration had been done via email and SharePoint uh, up to this stage. Um, but Teams presented a new way to work for these, these departments and these teams. Now, most of the Teams adoption we had was the typical, um, um, you know, structured team type collaboration. Um, there was a field team that handled, you know, uh, this area. It had this many reps. It had this many technical people. And those were the teams that formed and became very active. Um, because Teams was so active, we had one of these situations where we had a hammer and everything looked like a nail. We still needed to have these communities of practice. We still needed to figure out where uh, we could publish this information for folks. And one of the teams that really started thriving was what we call our solutions team. And our solutions team is really the team of our pre-sales technical resources. Uh, specifically, this team uh, was uh, focused on our North America um, uh, technical pre-sales technical folks, um, and then expanded out, as you can see here, some of our um, EMEA uh, sales engineers also uh, got involved in this team. And it became a place for us to do our, our business and, and conduct our you know, departmental work. Um, Teams tips, uh, training and knowledge, things like that all were conducted here. And so I thought this is a great place to bring expertise directly to these folks. And so what we did was we went and created channels for each major product area that we had. And I went out and I, I sort of twisted arms of the um, the strategy leads for each of these product areas. And I said, you know, hey guys, you need to uh, monitor these channels. It's important that someone knows that if they post a question, if they have a problem, if they're, you know, need help with a, a customer's use case or provisioning, um, that, uh, that someone's going to be there in order to help, right? So um, these were uh, moderated channels, which is great. And also uh, Teams being the hub that it is, gave us the opportunity to uh, go ahead and um, uh, associate additional tabs, additional resources, like for example, appropriate blogs, appropriate websites. Um, there's other channels that have, you know, other technical resources uh, flown in here as tabs. And so um, we actually got great adoption with these 
uh, with these channels. Um, the adoption was immediate um, and it was significant, um, which is great. Um, the discussions that happened were lively, they were timely, they were top of mind, we had a lot of collaboration, and so all of that was great. Um, and the fact that people knew they could post a question and get an answer in near near real time um, was really, really fantastic. It was much different than sending a message out in an email like a, like a message in a bottle and hoping that that someday it'll it'll come back to you. Um, and this process was in place, I would say, for the better part of a year and a half um, to the point where all of that stuff that was working well um, started to get balanced by some of the things that didn't work so well with this model. Uh, and the first was that, you know, all of this heavy engagement uh, meant that there was lots of content in these channels. Um, what happens in Teams when there's lots of messages and lots of threads, the scrolling happens, right? I don't see but the last eight or 10 messages that came above. Uh, and while I would love to say that people use the search functionality, um, let's be honest, most people don't, and it is not entry level stuff, right? To really use team search in a way, uh, I, I got a guy that works for me who's a he's a team search ninja, um, and this guy could could find you, you know, a threaded conversation by its subject and uh, in a pile of hay, but, um, that's not what most people are able to do. So historical curation of information uh, was difficult. And what uh, com the, the complaints I was getting from my SMEs was that we have to answer the same questions over and over again, right? Um, also, when there were questions that were being asked, we did want to really drive adoption and engagement, but we also wanted to be able to highlight the higher value responses or the responses that were more right than others <laughs> so that there was some guidance uh, and not just a bunch of opinions floating out there. Um, and so this was another issue um, that we started to notice, being able to quickly highlight and, and signify, no, this is the right approach, this is the right answer, this is the accurate information. And then finally, and, and perhaps most importantly, what became clear was the community that we were serving, this pre-sales technical team in North America, was getting a tremendous value, benefit, and attention. Uh, but our many other technical teams across the globe, pre-sales, post-sales, right, um, customer success, support, um, delivery, consulting, right, all of these other teams that also desperately needed this information were not uh, getting it. And that's because we put all of these channels into a team that was meant to service um, uh, just our pre-sales engineers. And so it wasn't appropriate to bring other people into that channel. And what dawned on me um, was that we forgot something very important about this definition. Um, this part about a community of practice being informally bound. And so much of the adoption we had in Teams was formally bound folks. They had structured reasons to collaborate on a regular basis. Now, um, I don't know if they're gonna kick me out of the conference for showing this slide. Um, this, is, this is a long history behind this slide. Um, I was maybe half a year ago, I was at a Microsoft uh, partner uh, and MVP event and this slide was referred to as, hey, do you remember that old inner outer loop slide? Um, and there was conversation, oh, no one uses that anymore. And, you know, it's, it's, it's old news. But when I went back and I looked at this slide, there's something <laughs> really poignant about it. It is pointing out exactly the problem that we were having with our collaboration. Um, the inner loop collaboration was going strong, but we were trying to use the same strategy for our inner loop co collaboration. Um, uh, or actually, we we're trying to use the same strategy for our outer loop collaboration that we were using for our inner loop collaboration, and it wasn't working. 
right? What made this uh, this engine of teams and these 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 highly engaged teams so useful was that people had a reason to go there, a reason to collaborate every day. The teams that we had that were focused more on general things, where maybe you would interact once a month, um, were not really uh, that engaged, were not really that useful. Now, this is not to say that teams can't be used in that way. Um, again, the reason this is a case study is because what we noticed at Avpoint is that that's the way Teams was getting adopted. Um, and so right about this time, um, something magical happened. Um, and that was really kind of mid late last year. That's when the news of the new Yammer uh, came out. And so I began to uh, get interested, understanding that we did have to fix a problem here of trying to use an inner loop approach for outer loop technology and, and for outer loop needs. Not necessarily thinking yet that Yammer was going to be the place that we went to, uh, but being willing to take a second look. So one of the first clues that there the that this was uh, this was meant to be was the fact that uh, the Yammer team renamed groups to communities. And again, if we go back to my communities of practice, it was more than just a vocabulary match, right? This was an understanding that these communities truly meant a way to connect people who are broadly dispersed, but get information to them. Now, it can't just be that, right? It can't just be a concept. And so the more driving um, topic here was that what I began to see is that for the kinds of things that we needed in a community of practice, it turns out Yammer was and now in the future will be um, for our purposes a better platform for that kind of collaboration than Teams was. Um, so um, the Topics that are up here, I will uh, I will cover in a moment because there's some of the details that we saw value from and will see value from. But let me pause and look for some questions. There's a question from the audience here. There's no way for administrators to keep users from creating their own channels, which has caused some confusion. Yes. So um, uh, I I believe that comment. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah, okay. Clarification. No way to keep uh, users from creating their own communities. Um, and that is exactly the point. <laughs> that is exactly the point that um, was a reason why we um, we were at first um, a little apprehensive. So there's a few few things here. Let's talk about with Yammer from a technology perspective. I don't have a slide on it, but let's get into it uh, in depth. Two new things um, that Microsoft announced at their Ignite conference last year, where of course this slide comes from. The first. Let me actually see if I've got uh, if I've got any reference to it on this previous slide. Sorry about that. Going backwards here. OK. Um, better mapped on this slide is the fact that um, Microsoft finally, after many years of Yammer clinging to this idea that it needed to be a viral technology, there's no way that anybody should ever be shut out from the experience of creating their own Yammer community. Um, I get it. I really do. Everybody should have a voice. But as described in the comment, um, the lack of ability to provide any kind of governance over Yammer, what groups existed, what communities existed, what was the purpose of those communities, um, really contributed to a lot of the dissatisfaction that we had with Yammer to begin with. Because again, this sort of viral adoption uh, is OK as long as it leads to sustained usage. And in our world, that kind of viral adoption actually led to fatigue because it was too chaotic. Um, what Microsoft announced at the Ignite conference last year and we've seen um, start to launch uh, this year are two things. First off, a new UI. And that new UI is is basically a bit of eye candy. Um, it's a platform upon which to build all of these additional features um, that are on the next slide. But the other core thing that Microsoft did was introduce a new mode called native mode. All right now, um, there had been a journey um, where Yammer had gone from being completely disconnected to the other Office 365 services. Um, going back a couple of years ago, we had what were called connected Yammer groups, 
which meant that they had all of the same underpinnings or much of the same underpinnings as Office 365 groups. They were backed by a SharePoint site. Um, they had access to Planner, things like that. Um, but still, if a user didn't have the ability to self-service create an Office 365 group, they still had the ability to create a legacy Yammer group. So there was no control. Um, with native mode, finally now, um, once your tenant is in native mode, and uh, it's not a native mode presentation, uh, but it's easy enough to get that uh, to get that data. And once your your tenant is in native mode for Yammer, that means that Yammer will follow the same rules for provisioning of Yammer communities that you have in place for the provisioning of Teams and the provisioning of Office 365 groups. Namely, um, if you want to implement managed provisioning processes for any of these group types, um, you can do that now because Yammer will follow those rules. So um, it's a great, uh, great curveball um, that we just uh, we just took on because while this session is not focused on that, um, the governance of Yammer and the ability to have some control over how your organization um, will create these collaboration spaces is truly um, is truly one of the things that factors in. I want to focus a little bit more right now on the community management functionality uh, because that's really one of the things in addition to native mode, um, that's one of the things that uh, that I think um, uh, really drove us to uh, to Yammer as a, a viable contender for this uh, for this transition. First off, um, the new UI, if you haven't seen it yet, the new Yammer UI, and we'll, we'll go through a demonstration of it um, uh, after a few slides, uh, really nice, really fluent. Um, um, we have a modern looking experience. Uh, we don't yet have full parity with some of the things that were in the legacy interface, although we're just about there. And I would argue that some of the things um, that we're not at parity yet are actually better in the new interface than in the old interface. Um, the one thing I lament a little bit is the some of the admin related uh, uh, features for community managers that are not yet available in the new interface, uh, but it's easy enough to flip back to the old interface as, as we'll show you. Um, the ability to do um, uh, things like pinned posts. I'll show you an example of, of that. The ability to do live events. These are all things that that um, really were were key. Um, Q and A, right? Q and A as a post type. The ability to mark a best answer, and in the new user interface, the ability to have that best answer rise to the top um, has really been a, a valuable thing. And for us, the key drivers were um, very clear. So a couple things on here that um, that we'll point out, and then again we'll get into our our demonstration a little bit. Q and A post type. So the ability in this is now the the new Yammer interface. Um, the ability to do things like um, offer right from the outset the ability to say that I want to create a Q and A or publish a poll or do things like that. Polls we can do in Teams, but. Um, this Q&A functionality is really cool. Um, for me as a community manager and, and trying to guide other community managers, one of the most important things that we can do is provide a curated experience here. Um, again, there's tremendous value in viral communities. There truly is, but that's not what I'm cultivating. What I'm cultivating is a community of practice. Yes, I want engagement, but what I want to do is be able to, to point people to specific areas of value. So, for example, being able to curate topics, aggregate them together, and even as I've done here in the pinned area, be able to guide people to the landing pages for those topics so that they have an easy way to zone in on content that might be relevant to a subset of this particular product area, right? This is key. Um, the ability to easily see how many people have viewed each post, right? This is um, uh, fantastic for adoption and understanding how your, your community is being used. Um, the insights and analytics, which again, aren't yet in the admin or aren't yet in the new user interface, but again, easy enough to flip over to the, um, uh, to the older interface and view those analytics um, uh, where I can get more aggregated views as opposed to just post by post. And then think about it. What I'm cultivating here are communities of practice for product areas. And so now I don't have to solve my problem anymore of, hey, we're going to have a training. Who do I send the invite to, right? 
how do we know where the resources for that training were after the fact, right? All of these things can now happen in live events that we host right uh, right here through this Yammer community in cooperation, of course, with Teams uh, for some of the back end and actual delivery functionality. So um, these are some of the things that we saw tremendous value in um, with, uh, with Yammer. So let me let me pop off here real quick. And I'm going to be careful because I have some uh, <laughs> I have some top secret stuff, but I do want to show you some of our um, uh, some of our internal uh, stuff because um, again, this is a case study specifically about that, right? So this is our our Yammer community, our new Yammer community for our governance product area, and you can see the new interface uh, looks great. You can see the topics here, right? So uh, I'm asking a question about topic area, about um, what is the most uh, driving feature. This is a post I put up uh, Monday. Um, we've got some votes already. I can view the results right from here. And I've also tagged it um, with, a, with a topic. Um, and we've, we're curating several topics, right? So for example, if you want to view all of the roadmap topics, uh, you can just read down here. Um, if you want to read up on case study topics, uh, you can read down these threads. And so curating these things allows me to provide more guided access to all of this, uh, this data, right? Um, the ability to start out with a Q&A type um, uh, of question and be able to highlight um, a best answer, right, is key. I mentioned that this this UI is is not a permanent thing while it's in preview, um, and I believe the messaging we've gotten from the Yammer team is until there's full parity with the old UI, um, you'll have this slider. Now they're going to want some information from you before you switch back, <laughs> but uh, if you're like me, you switch back and forth all the time. So um, this just simply takes me back to uh, the previous view, right? And again, not much difference. You can see my pinned post. Um, doesn't actually work up here uh, because this is the old interface and pin posts are part of the new interface. So you can see that information there. Another thing that I like re very much about um, this is the ability to um, go and oh, we'll pause on here. The ability to to uh, go through here and um, view some of the analytics. So um, the group insights who, in the last seven days, who was active, what messages did they see, what messages did they like? OK, now, of course, this isn't our thriving community. <laughs> um, there's uh, there's a little bit of sensitivity that I wanted to manage, but um, you can see even in this uh, in this one that we've just stood up how a lot of these metrics uh, are really useful in addition to my view counts. All right, which I can see um, directly here, right, for my in my new interface. So um, good stuff, right? Useful stuff in in the new UI. Uh, but that's not all there is. So let's go back here, and let me just quickly scrape up the um, the text chat. See if there's any questions. Nothing yet. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the frustrations that were had before. Um, Remember, we, we tried this Yammer thing before and there was uh, an initial spike um, and then we started to fall off and there uh, some fatigue set in. Now, part of that was because back then we didn't do a great job of training people on the role of a community manager. And I think this is something way, way back in the Yammer days. The community managers were the superheroes, right, of um, of uh, of Yammer. And we didn't really train people on that. And that's something just to keep in mind, right? So um, we do have a process internally now when we do stand up a new Yammer community that is intended to be one of these communities of practice that we go ahead and we train folks on their role and we make sure that they're curating. So that, that, that one we've talked about. But what we haven't talked about is how connected is this information to the information that I deal with on a regular basis? How easy is it to come over here and comment on things? How easy is it 
for me to integrate the files here with the files that I'm sharing? How easy it for, is it for me to co-author on these things and all this kind of stuff? And that's where there's two big integrations here that I think are really, really um, worth pointing out. And the first one is one that we saw come out um, a while ago, a few months ago for, um, uh, for Outlook on the web. And just recently has launched now for, or has been announced for Outlook desktop, at least on Windows. I know there was a tech community post just recently on this. And basically what we've got here is the ability, if you can see, I got an email, right, from someone in the, this is the Yammer customer connection community. And he made a Q&A post. And you can see here, his post is directly in line with my email. So if I want to reply or comment or share this, I don't have to leave my inbox to do that. I can do it directly from my inbox. So my community managers, those people that I've, I've twisted their arms now and said, hey, 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 make sure you're curating this community. All they need to do is get this message and they can go ahead and respond um, without having to go find their way to Yammer or something like that. Now, this is good. Um, the we're not quite there yet this is not a full fidelity experience in here um, in that for example uh, i don't believe uh, i can yet put a topic on a, a question from this interface but easy enough if i needed to do that to go ahead and, and open in yammer now for my for my community uh members not my community owners, um, this is super great, right? They can respond to questions, they can give their input, they can respond to feedback um, all without leaving their email, right? And so I think you saw some information or some some graphics in the old, in the uh, Yammer um, session at Ignite last year about how Yammer loves Outlook um, and Yammer loves Teams as well. So we followed a particular um, we followed a particular, <laughs> that's, a, that's an aggressive graphic there. We followed a particular strategy um, because we didn't necessarily want to disrupt our uh, thriving communities as we launched, um, as we launched uh, Yammer communities, right? How do I go about taking a thriving, let's in this case, solutions team that's working on this topic pull one of those cha uh, channels out, right? And then at the same time, continue the engagement from that team while at the same time increasing engagement elsewhere. And there's a few ways that we did that. Um, one way was we had already had our channel. So this is my solutions team. Here's the governance channel. What we did is we went ahead and we set the moderation settings for this particular team channel um, to not allow posts by non-team owners, okay? So let me pull over a, a Teams, um, a Teams um, client here, and let's talk about how we did that. Now, again, if you're if you're not in the the situation where um, you were collaborating in Teams, um, you're not going to have this problem, but what we essentially did is, let's say we wanted to convert this research and development uh, community uh, over to Yammer, right? What we could do is simply, let me just open this up here. We could go in here to Yammer. And again, you can see this tenant here. I don't have the new interface yet, but that's okay. Um, no problem there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new group, and I'm going to call this one research and development. Dev uh, COP for community of practice. Right, and now I have a Yammer group, and I can start to build this out with all the, the settings that I want. And let's say now we want to take this research and development uh, conversation and build it out more broadly beyond just the Mark 8 team. We want this to be an organization-wide community of practice. Um, there's a couple things I can do. Now, the first thing that I can do is come up over here and add a tab. And I'm gonna add the tab if it's in here yet, which it should be, but it is not. Uh, 
Uh, there should be a Yammer tab up here. So this tenant doesn't look like it has the Yammer tab. Uh, but what we did back in our real tenant was go ahead and as you can see here, we provided a direct access to that Yammer community uh, right from a tab in the same channel that used to be where the conversations happen, right? And then the second step of that journey was to go ahead and set the um, channel moderation settings for this team. So what I did is came in here and I turned channel moderation on, right? And we said that only moderators are allowed to uh, post messages. OK, so essentially what we did was we made one last post. And as you can see in this email, that channel had one last post. Uh, here and that last post was, hey, we're moving these discussions to Yammer. Here's the channel. Oh, by the way, here's your tab and let's go ahead and start to continue the communications over there. Right. So um, this is how we transitioned those conversations um, and thus far we haven't moved all the communities yet uh, but thus far we've seen no slowdown in engagement by the team that had already been using um, this uh, method of communication this channel um, but now we're seeing engagement outside as well a couple of tips if you're going to do this um, uh, i remember back at the outset we had um, we had some some folks in the um, in the 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 quiz or the um the poll that said that they were already using uh yammer to some degree and so that happened with us as well what happened with us is there were already some posts that had been in some of these less managed communities um, and so one of the things that is a rule of thumb is when you create a new yammer community obviously we don't have the tech yet to migrate all of those legacy conversations from teams but what I noticed is there were already a lot of conversations happening in Yammer that were related to that new community I was creating. So I spent some time going through Yammer and all I simply did was start to curate by sharing existing posts to my new community, okay? Because the rule is you need gravity, right? And what creates gravity? Number one, an easy path creates gravity. So by shutting this down, by putting the Yammer tab here and directing everybody to it from the existing process, and then by creating value by the time people get here. If, if you do all this and you set this up and this is a blank white sheet of paper, that's gonna be a tough place to start, right? So what you wanna do is make sure that you're already curating uh, content from uh, other locations. Um, here's another one. The strategy that I use generally when I do this is to go ahead and share this content, say something about it. Wow, this is super relevant. And this is about data access, right? So I'm a community manager and I'll tag it, right? So what happens now is the conversation is showing up here in my new community. I've already started the curation. I can now click on this topic, copy this link, and then potentially even go back and start pinning these things um, into, uh, into the pinned resources. And again, it looks much better on the new interface as you can see here um, when we have those things set up. Uh, here we go. Right. So those are some of the tips and tricks that uh, that we learned along the way to try to ensure that adoption. Number one, redirection, right? Redirection of where people were to where they're going. And there's, uh, you know, the tools are, are there um, to do it, um, especially once you have that Yammer tab. Um, and then um, the making sure that you're constantly curating content. OK, so uh, that was our quick demo. Um, so we're just about at time here. So let me pause and see if we've got any final questions. And we'll make a minute or two. Um, if not, um, <laughs> thanks for joining us. No, that that shouldn't be there. That that graphic shouldn't be there. So um, thank you for joining us. Let me put up a um, 
uh, a final slide where you can get the um, uh, the session and event feedback out. So here we go. Nothing behind the curtain there. Um, go ahead and use these links to uh, to feedback both uh, both on the topic and on the session, um, as well as on the event. This is this is one of the first times uh, we've done one of these uh, very personal um, case studies. Um, so if it's a topic that you like, trust me, there's there's a lot on my to do list that uh, that we could highlight. So um, looks like there's there's no questions. So we will um, say goodbye. And thank you for joining us and we'll see you in the next one. Definitely um, plan on being in the um, in the live action um, meeting next uh, next March. We're looking forward to seeing you all out there at the uh, Microsoft uh, 365 conference March of next year. Thanks everybody. Uh, there is a question. Yeah, are we still live? No. Uh, there's a question about um, redirection into Yammer if everybody's currently in email. Um, that's a great question, and I think this is your answer. Um, again, uh, let me just pull it up for you real quick. Um, we have this reality now. So. Um, Outlook Web Access supports this. Check the tech community. I believe there was just an announcement posted last week that um, full interaction with Yammer communities from your inbox where you can have these kind of rich integrations and um, and uh, responses to Yammer posts right from your inbox um, should be coming to desktop very soon. Uh, I think I saw the message that it was beginning to roll out. So depending upon your um, what ring you're in for your office uh, client, you could you could start to rely on that. Other than that, this was one of the things that drove me to uh, using Outlook Web Access. Uh, it had been some 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 time, but uh, but I went ahead and, and did that. So great question about uh, redirecting from email. OK, guys, uh, we got to log off, make room for the next. And uh, thank you very much for your participation and your questions. We greatly appreciate it. Well, we're still live and there's one more question. What's the best use case for Yammer? Seems like there's some overlap with other Microsoft products and you want a distinction. Um, yeah, I think I think the, the, the reason this is a difficult question is because it really depends on the organization. For us, the best use case for Yammer was collaboration amongst teams that don't have a need to communicate every day. Um, so those again, back to the the slide that we had presented, those outer loop communications, um, which we talked about here. It's an old story, but it actually stands up, right? The fact that these are loose connections among people, as opposed to um, people that I collaborate with day in and day out. This is where I'm seeing strong teams adoption internally. Um, if I look at my teams that are supposed to service you know, loosely connected people, um, they don't get much action, right? Um, and so Yammer can be a great place for these people, these places to go because um, we don't, at that point, we don't have, uh, uh, we don't support or condone public teams just due to the, the oversharing that can happen in there. Um, and um, uh, for that reason, um, our teams tend to be named collections of people who we know have a need to collaborate, right? So by putting everything in Yammer, now all I have to do is give people access to the uh, the Yammer community URL. Um, all of my live events, all of my training goes there. Um, it's a really it's a, it's a pretty straightforward process. Let's see if we've got any more.
OK, last question here. Is uh, now that we live in teams, can we get the Yammer posts again? Yeah, the, the teams, um, the teams Yammer post, uh, the teams uh, tab for Yammer is the way to go. OK, uh, they're kicking me out, guys. Thanks again for your interaction and um, uh, loved all the questions. Uh, any that I missed, we'll try to scoop up and get out to you um, through a blog post post this. OK, thanks, everybody.